Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. So this is the May edition of uh, Mail and Donations for 2024 and uh, in this video I have a couple of smaller items to show you that I got from the regular AliExpress and eBay uh, and uh, then I also have this big box which is another computer for my collection that I probably need to fix up. So let's take a look at what I got the last month. So what's in this then? Well it's stuff I I needed and a couple of things I I wanted. <laughs> so let's take a look. Maybe not that exciting but uh, yeah sometimes we have packages like this obviously digikey is one of the largest uh, suppliers of electronic components and they have an online shop so i ordered stuff i actually need i'm gonna go quickly through it there's some uh, solder wick i have had these before but uh, they were used up now so yeah that's uh, yeah good stuff a couple of dim connectors and yes, I'm building at the second 1581 floppy disk drive now and uh, I thought I had most of the parts but I didn't. I missed a couple of components like these filters and a couple of uh, uh, resistor networks. So that's that. And also I stocked up on some uh, chips, TTL chips. This is a 74LS241, this is a 139, that's chips that are usually used on Commodore machines. And yeah, this is a dip switches. Here we have, uh, yeah, I, uh, I bought two uh, Raspberry Pi Picos because they are very cheap. They are like five dollars each. And uh, yeah, I recently had, um, I recently got a Sidkick Pico uh, that uses uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico. So I just bought a couple just to have in case I need it for some project or something. A couple of more components here. Yeah, uh, yes, I bought uh, two Z80 CPUs, 10 megahertz. You know, the Z80, it has been produced for, what, what was it, 40, 50 years? and uh, they actually now decided to stop producing them but uh, from time to time you, i need a set 80 cpu in some old computer that uses it and uh, i think i got a couple from before but they're quite cheap so i think they're like ten dollars each bought two brand new of uh, that this is the uh, 74 ls 14 and this is the 74 ls 93 yeah and finally this big thing this is a fume extractor i do a lot of soldering and i haven't been really good at using uh, fume extractors i don't have a professional one they're quite expensive i actually made myself uh, <laughs> a simple one a while back i use it sometimes and that's this one it's just a simple 12 volt uh, computer fan and i uh, added some uh, carbon uh, felt on the back of it so it's supposed to clean i actually think it does uh, i tested it with smoke <laughs> it sucked in the smoke and no smoke came out on the other side but how effective it is i have no idea so I got this one. This was uh, the cheapest I could find on DigiKey. <laughs> so it was like $35. But I don't have room up here for a, a large fan and uh, hoses and stuff. So this is what I can manage. So it says smoke absorber. Bench top fume extractor specially designed to quickly absorb and remove the toxic gases released during the welding process. Wyatt yet powerful with changeable activated carbon filter. Okay, let's uh, just uh, test it. Oh no, oh no, I forgot. I have gotten the American plug. 
I have forgotten that before. Uh, however, does it run on 110 volts or is it uh, running on bolt? If it's running on bolt, then I can just replace the plug with a European one. Why can't you Americans go over to the uh, normal <laughs> systems for <laughs> the metric system and <laughs> like normal voltages in your houses? Yeah, here you can see that that's that kind of uh, carbon filter. It's almost the same as I have on my <laughs> homemade. So I need to figure out if this is 110 volt. Yes, it is. Dang. So I, I think maybe I, I'm going to return it if it's possible. If, if it's not going to cost me more than <laughs> getting a new one. But uh, I have a 110 volt step down converter. I can always use that. I usually remember to select the European version when I when I buy something on AliExpress and yeah, eBay if there's a selection, but this time I forgot. So let's turn it on, take a listen. Yeah. It seems quite powerful. But obviously quite noisy. A lot more noisier than the one I made myself, <laughs> but it's probably a little bit more powerful. Yes, it works. Well, I have to see what I'm gonna do with this, how the return for DigiKey works. I mean, if I have to send it back to the United States and pay for the shipping, then it's gonna cost more than buying a new one, I guess, because shipping was free this time uh, on DigiKey. If you buy more than like 50, 60 dollars worth, then you get a free shipping. Yeah, and I didn't notice it, it comes with a, a stand as well. So you, you get it a little bit up in the air. That's good. Next up, what's this then? Doesn't say anything on the package. Um, yeah, I think it's it's been re-labeled, so the original label is not visible. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> that's a multi-USB, multi-interface adapter for porch. I bought this from Aliexpress, not much to say about this, not a retro gadget, this is <laughs> more modern. Yeah, it's just a simple USB hub, nothing much to say about that. Alright, the next package is this one, this is something I bought um, from a Norwegian seller. Let's take a look. Sounds like... Yeah, Lego. <laughs> Alrighty, yeah. Look at that. That is a complete set of keycaps for an Amiga 1200. And some springs. Uh, yeah, I think these are used, but yeah, they seem a little bit yellowed, so they are used. Um, I bought them quite cheaply. I think it was like 25 euros and yeah that's not a lot for a complete set of keycaps when uh, when these in fact sell for around yeah some places on e ebay for 10 dollars each so i currently don't have any use for them right now but um, i have a, a case for an amiga 1200 and um, i was thinking about someday to actually build an Amiga 1200 from uh, one of those mo modern motherboards replicas. We'll see about that. That's a little bit more complex than, for example, a Commodore 64 <laughs> because the 1200 has a lot of custom chips that you need to source and also has a lot of, uh, of surface uh, mounted uh, chips and components. So a little bit more difficult. We'll see. Okay, moving on. Next one, this little envelope, it says, uh, uh, doesn't say anything, but it's sent from Italy, Poste Italiane, and it's from uh, Limbiate, Via Trieste. Okay, something I bought on eBay. Yeah, let's take a further look. <laughs> In fact, not really sure what it is. Okay, yeah, it's connectors. Yeah, 
I'm currently building another 1581 floppy disk drive and uh, I didn't have all the connectors so I bought these on eBay from Italy nothing much more to say about that got a few extra more than I need this one comes uh, from uh, Deutsche Post it's uh, from Germany obviously and says uh, one computer chip I see yeah and this is the chip I'm waiting for actually for this I was uh, yeah uh, eBay they charge uh, VAT when you buy something and then you shouldn't be paying VAT when you get the package but I was charged for VAT and additional um, charges from the Norwegian Post so and that's because this package has not the VOEC number printed on it so I actually contacted eBay and they are gonna refund it <laughs> We'll see if that happens. Anyway, this is a Commodore chip. It has a Commodore logo there. It has a date code of 1091. But what kind of chip is it? Well, what I ordered was a 8520 interface chip uh, that um, works with the Amigas and uh, also with the 1581 floppy disk drive and that's why I bought it because I need it for that second drive and here it is and that actually completes that drive I now have everything I need to build another one I actually I have built the motherboard uh, or the, the PCB and soldered everything except um, this chip and uh, ready to test it not gonna make a video about that because I already did but um, I think I'm gonna sell one of those then we have this one it's uh, sent from uh, Singapore uh, yeah this is not a retro computer or electronics related in fact just gonna show it here anyway <laughs> I bought this just for fun uh, it's uh, yeah not very useful I think but uh, we'll see let's take a look what is it it's a portable multiband transceiver AMFM aviation band receiving yeah it's a walkie talkie or two-way radio <laughs> so why the heck did I buy this well I just wanted to test it out it was quite cheap I think it was 30 uh, euros and uh, yeah it feels kind of sturdy it has a lot of features uh, <laughs> I just want to listen and uh, see if I can hear anything exciting maybe I can hear the the ATC from the airport or uh, yeah ships boat traffic around here and um, it comes with a charger and uh, yeah this is uh, clip clip for a belt I'm not gonna test this out in this video because it's not related to my content on this channel another package from um, AliExpress obviously they resend it from uh, Norway put uh, several items together if you have ordered several things what's this okay it's a connector this is for uh, yeah, connecting uh, uh, ATX power supply to those older AT style power connectors on the AT motherboards because I don't have that. So that's simply that. What is this? Uh, this is a 10AOTG. I don't remember. Okay, yeah, that's just a simple adapter going from. Uh, USB to USB-C I uh, simply didn't have that one so it cost next to nothing I got two moving on the next one is uh, this one I'm not really sure where it came from um, it has some <laughs> Chinese <laughs> letters there so yeah probably China then <laughs> all right yeah that's it okay so these are some uh, extra tools for my little dremel well it's actually not the dremel it's uh, another brand uh, no name brand i bought this on aliexpress but it has been uh, 
Var det good? But I have uh, broken or used up some of the tools, so this is a kit of a lot of new tools and uh, didn't cost a lot either. <laughs> I'm not really sure if it fits because the, the diameter on uh, the tools might be different, but uh, I think this is the correct compared to the one that's in, yes. Let's see. Yeah. So what I was really out of was these uh, cutting discs. And here's a whole bunch of those in that uh, little container there. Very handy tool if you're gonna do small uh, things like I do. And uh, yeah, I have a regular Dremel also, but uh, it's a little bit more bulky, bigger uh, tools as well. This is more handy and I can have it always ready here on my bench. Yeah, it just came like this, so I need to find a little box for it. I have one here. Uh, what do we have in this? Yeah, that's a whole bunch, maybe 30 cutting discs. Black ones. Various type of uh, abrasive tools for uh, yeah, filing or brushing. Even more uh, thinner cutting discs. This is more like a tougher uh, fiber or metal, yeah, metal cutting disc. These are uh, the tools that uh, goes into the tool itself and holds the cutting discs. This one too is for uh, adding some of the parts uh, onto a tool, sharpening stone or something. No, this isn't uh, cutting discs. This is some kind of, uh, I don't know, cement-like um, substance. I have no idea what this is for. Um, hmm. If you know, then uh, give me a comment. Maybe it's for sharpening or, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of semi-soft, like wax. Probably says on the product page on uh, AliExpress, or maybe it says it here. 105 pieces, and it's in French. <laughs> One pâté à polit, maybe that's it. <laughs> Made in China, but in French. This little package came uh, all the way from China again, and uh, I think it's AliExpress, but I don't remember what it could be. It's some kind of uh, tools, I think. <laughs> okay, we have a box with some uh, Chinese label on. Aha, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, one is bent. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, those tools. <laughs> Not really sure what they are called. Poking tools. If you are soldering and you have some uh, true holes that are filled with solder and uh, yeah, you have a hard time getting it freed up, then you use these tools to poke through the hole. These are supposedly stainless steel, so um, solder won't stick to them then. Various sizes, <laughs> not really sure if I have a lot of use for the bigger ones, but uh, yeah, they could be useful in some cases. Cost almost nothing, so I just uh, got this uh, <laughs> just to have them around. Nice to have. All right, finally we have the big box and uh, yeah, this was something I found on the internet on the Norwegian fin.no sales site and uh, yeah, it was quite cheap. So I immediately bought it for a uh, 500 nook or around 50 euros from a Norwegian seller. So what do we have here? You can probably already tell it's a computer and it's a quite yellowed 
week 20. It's uh, missing uh, the space bar. Not sure if it works or not. I don't think the seller knew either, but uh, we'll see about that. And uh, yeah, there's uh, <laughs> the cassette recorder and it actually has a game in it. It's uh, week 20 games pack, Alien Blitz, Invaders, a Ground Attack, Storm and Space Rocks. Both sides are the same from Melbourne House. Yeah, that's nice to have. And of course, um, the power supply. And this is uh, the old Wick 20 black brick power supply. So it has this uh, old type of uh, power input plug. So this is one of the older models then of the Wick 20. Yeah, there you go. Very yellowed and very dirty. A pity with the missing spacebar, but uh, I can probably find a replacement. At least I have one for uh, the Commodore 64 keyboard that I can use. Not sure if it fits. I think it does. Okay, so the label. Yeah, it says week 20 made in Western Germany and the serial number 63357. That's uh, quite a low serial number. Yeah, and here we can see it has this two prong power input and uh, yeah this is an unusual on off switch so the later models had uh, the round DIN connector like the Commodore 64 does it work or not let's figure it out I'm gonna hook it up before I do that I'm obviously gonna check the power supply see that it gives out the correct voltage oh it's really dirty so this one should give out 9 volts nothing much there not sure if I have a good contact here. 1.5 volts. Okay, so it seems like the power supply is dead. And then it could be difficult to test this. Since the whole thing is so dirty, maybe it's a dirty contacts. Use a little file. So now it reads 3.6 volts and it's 50 hertz, so at least the frequency is correct. So something is coming through. Okay, I see why it doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> there should be a fuse there. There's no fuse and there's even no fuse holder. So hmm, how can I fix that? Not really sure. I don't have such a fuse holder. And this is just a solid block of, uh, yeah, I guess it's uh, epoxy and uh, there's no screws or anything. So it's impossible to open and do something with, I guess. Here's an old uh, Commodore 64 power supply. Let's see if it's the same fuse holder there. Yeah, looks like it. Nope, it's not the same, it's uh, too thick. I found another one, let's try this one then. No, doesn't fit. Nope, I found this uh, 9 volt AC adapter. Uh, I have obviously already used uh, <laughs> the connector. So I'm just gonna cut the connector. This power supply is so no use anymore anyway so just gonna sacrifice it to be able to test i might find a, an original uh, power supply sometime later which actually fits so let me just uh, connect this instead let me see first does it have a uh, 9 volts ac yeah 10.5 and it actually uh, has uh, max output uh, 3.6 volt apps and uh, that's more than the 3.0 which the original have. So I'm gonna try one of these fancy solder <laughs> type connector thingies. Not really sure what they're called but uh, yeah they have a little bit of solder inside and uh, yeah, it, it heats shrink plastic also so you just uh, Place it around the wires and use some heat. Yeah, that's perfect. So, 
Now a little hot air or you can use your soldering iron if you want to. It contains a low melt solder so you don't need a lot of heat to melt that solder. If it's strong or not, I'm not really sure. I just used it once before I think. Seems to be melting at least. All right, let's see now. Do we have uh, 10.6 volts? Yes, we do. Nice. Okay, now we can test the machine. So I just tried to connect my Commodore 64 video cable, which I always have lying around here, but then I realized this has another type of DIN connector for video out, and it doesn't have an RF modulator. <laughs> I just didn't remember that, but I, I got the video cable here for the VIC-20. Actually, it came with some sort of uh, uh, external RF modulator back in the day. This one gives us a composite video out. We're on SCART. All right, let's see if it works. Power LED turns on, but no signal, nothing. So there's not even a black screen. There's simply no video signal out of this. All right, so that's gonna be it for testing this machine in this video. I'm gonna leave this uh, for a dedicated video sometime later. Also have the cassette to test. So I think I'll do this video pretty soon. So <laughs> you just need to hang around on my channel to see the continuation of this. So I'm in no way sad because of this machine didn't work. I actually expected it not to work. And uh, that's the fun of it. Try to figure out what's wrong and to repair it.